In this walkthrough, I'm going to be showing you how to create an Android application which has more than one screen. In an Android application, you may have multiple screens, and each screen is known as an activity. And to create a new activity, you need both a layout file, which is your view, and you also need a view controller, which is your Java class file. So what I'm going to do is create a new project. I will call it two screens. And I will target API 17, as that's what's been installed. I'm not worried about the custom icon for the time being, and but I want to create an activity. So I click on Next, and I've got a choice of blank activity. I'll keep the default names, and we'll launch the project. Once everything is loaded and the, and the uh, processes have stopped, I'm going to close the current windows and I'm going to open the project pane. And if I open these folders up, there's my application folder, there's my source, and I've got my Java and my res folders. I'm going to add a new activity and I want the activity to be in the same package, com.example.2screens. So I right click, I choose new, and I choose activity. I want a blank activity. I call this one edit activity. Layout name activity edit. Don't, bother, don't use the XML extension. Title is going to be edit screen. And I, don't want to, I don't, do not want a navigation type. So I click on there, and if we look at the project pane, you can see that in the Java folder, I now have two controllers, edit activity and main activity, and in my layout folder, I have two layouts. I have activity edit and activity main. So I can now start to design my interface. In activity main, you'll notice that I have a text view. I'm going to delete the text view and I'm going to have a button. And I'm going to align my button horizontally and vertically and I'm going to change the text. To change the text I should really have an entry in the strings.xml file. So I click on the ellipses here and I'm going to create a new resource, a new string value. I'll call this one click underscore me and the value is going to be the text that displays. Click me exclamation mark. The file name strings.xml. I click on OK. And now that's been finished for me. I'm now going to change the layout of my edit screen. And in my edit screen, I'm going to have, I'll get rid of the label first. I'm going to put a plain text field. I'm going to center it here, and I'm going to use my layout tools to make sure it fills the width of the screen. So layout align parent, I want it left aligned, and I want it right aligned. And the margin, I'm going to have 20 dp on the left, I'm going to have about 40 dp at the top, and I'm going to have 20 dp at the right. And that looks about right. So I've now created my two layouts. So I've now need to go and start working on my view controllers. And the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to launch one activity from another activity. So we're going to have to add an on-click handler. So I'll go to my main activity, .java. I can, I've got all files open now, so I can close that. And I'm going to implement view.on click listener which allows me to implement my click handler I click on the bubble there and I choose to implement the methods and I'm going to implement the on click method and there's my on click handler so now let's make a connection to my button there's my object alt enter allows me to import the correct 
library and now I'm going to connect it together. Find a view by ID, r.id and it's button because I haven't changed it from the default. And I'm going to set the onclick handler. Set onclick listener to this because I've implemented view the onclick listener. And I have my method now. So my next job is to create a new intent. And I'm going to, oh, to import the library, alt enter. So I now need two parameters. This and edit activity dot class. And that's my new intent ready to launch my second view. So I can now start, start activity and pass it my intent and that should launch the second activity. So I'll launch a simulator and I'll start so a slightly scaled down version of the simulator. Close the device manager let's return to the code. So while we're waiting for the simulators to load, we're going to change our onClick code so we can pass some data to the second activity. So I need to add some extra data. I dot put extra and I'm going to call the value label and it's going to be this dot button dot get text and that will retrieve the text from the button and send it to the second activity. Now I've now got to change start activity for start activity for result and I'm going to pass it a request code. So let's just have integer value one. I've now created an event handler which creates an intent to launch the edit activity, pushes the text from the button into a key called label, and then starts activity for result. So what I'm going to do now is go into the second activity, and I'm going to hook up the edit text. I'll call my object edit text, same procedure. equals edit text find view by id r dot id dot edit text that was my id for my edit text so now i've connected my edit text i'm going to retrieve the data that's been passed so bundle bundle equals get intent dot get extras and that retrieves my bundle of data and I'm going to make sure before I assign the value I'm going to make sure it exists so I need an if statement if bundle dot get string label is not equal to null in other words there's a value in there I want to do something with it and I want to assign it to a string first. And then I'm going to assign that string to my edit text. Dot edit text dot set text. Label. So I've now signed it to the edit text. I'm now going to try and run my application so far. So I choose my emulator that I've already launched and it's now installing on the emulator. So if I click on this button, it should launch the second screen 
and it should pass the text to the edit text. I now need to pass whatever changes I've made back to my first program. So if I click on the edit text and I change this text, when I click on the back button, I would like to pass the value back and display it as the text on the button. The first step of this is I need to implement on back pressed, which is the code that gets run when the back button is pressed. So there's my code stub and I'm going to put a log in here to show it's working. Always a good idea. Alt enter to import the library. The key I will use is log and I'll send the message on back pressed. And now we can test this to make sure that log message gets displayed. So I run. I choose the emulator I will add a filter and I'll filter by log tag and log was my log tag and let's see if this works so I hit click me I hit the back button and you can see in the log at the bottom it says on back pressed which means that event handler is firing properly so now we can add some code to this so i need to create a new intent because we're passing data back i'll import intent i dot put extra um, we use the same tag which is label and string label equals this dot edit text dot get text and I'm going to pass it the label. Okay, now we can see that an edit text produces an editable object whereas we want a string. So this is a good test, otherwise we'd have got gone very wrong. So I'll convert to a string like so. And now, now I'm creating a string variable with the text and assigning it to the put extra. Now I need to set result. And the result code will be results OK. And the intent data goes in like so. So that should now send the value back to the first activity. I return to my first activity and we're going to listen out for that data. New method, protected void on activity result. And the three parameters, a request code A response code and the intent. So let's put a log in here to see it's working. Import log, Alt Enter. Use the same tag and I'll put a message to say in on activity result and let's test that before we do any more code so I'll launch the simulator as before click on the background click to go to the second screen and if we look at the log I'm going to clear the log before we do anything else if I click the back button we see on back pressed now you may get to this state and wonder why it's not closing the second view. Well, the reason is we haven't quite finished. In the second activity, we have to call on back pressed on the parent class. So super 
on back pressed and that will fix that problem. So we'll run it again and see what happens. Launch the simulator. So I click the button. I hit the back button. And you'll see in the log file it now says on back pressed. That's that log message. But also says on activity results. So we know we're getting back to the right event handler. So now we can start to add some more code. In main activity, we need to retrieve the value that's been passed back. So it's all, everything in reverse. Bundle, bundle equals intent dot get extras, as we did when we passed the data over. And then we'll do an if statement to make sure the value is there. If bundle dot get string and the key we used was label is not equal to null, then we know we've got the value to assign. So we can say this dot button dot set text bundle dot get string label. So at that point we should have a working application. Let's run it again. Run the emulator. So I click on the button which takes me to which takes me to the second screen. I'll change the text hide the keyboard and click on the back button. And you can see that the text on the button has changed. So I've shown you now how you can pass data from one activity to another activity and how to pass data back to the first activity using explicit intents. For the second part of this walkthrough, I'm going to talk to you about menus. We're going to add a menu at the top here, which allows us to edit the text. And on the second screen, we're going to have a context menu where you press and hold on the edit text to allow us to clear the edit text. And this is really simple. So the first thing we're going to do is notice that I've been given a menu already, which says settings. So I need to change that. So it says edit, and I want to turn it into a button at the top here instead of a menu option. So let's have a look at the menu. In main activity, it says on create options menu, r.menu.main. So we need to find that. So r.menu.main. And here we are. So I'm going to change the ID to r.id.action edit. I'm going to change the text, the title, instead of saying settings, I want it to say edit. So I'm going to go to my values, strings, and I'm going to add a new entry here. String name equals edit. And it'll be the text edit. So now I can go back in and go to my menu and ID Android dot title string dot action edit and shows action as an action button always. So now we should have that displaying on the top of the screen. Run the emulator. And as you can see, there's my edit button in the top of the screen, the top right hand corner. So now we need to trigger something when that is activated. So back to my main activity. And I've got something called
on. And there's one parameter which is the menu item. Public Boolean on options item selected. So now we are going to uh, implement some code so we can listen out for the menu items being clicked. So we need an if statement first to see which which options being clicked. If item dot get item ID is equal to r dot id dot action edit, which is our menu option. We'll send the message to say so we can see it's working. Log dot v and that should work. And whatever happens we need to return super dot on options item selected like so so now this should work and we should be able to see a log message appear when we clicked on the item so if I click on edit you see it says item selected in the log file so we're almost there now so what I want to do now, I want to do exactly the same as the on click. So I can literally just lift this code out, like so, and drop it into the on options item selected. So now when I run it, we should launch the second activity. So if I click on edit, there's the second activity working. The final task I want to do is to press and hold on the edit text to get a context menu, which allows me to clear the text. So the first thing I have to do is I have to register the edit text. So on create uh, edit text, register for context menu, edit text, and that will now trigger a context menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the options menu on this screen by deleting that. And I'm going to recycle that menu here. So there's my edit menu. And I'm going to change this so I can use this for my context menu. So I'm going to call it ID action, so ID context underscore clear the title I'm going to change in the strings and add the new entry there I'm going to go back to my menu and the title is going to be strings context underscore clear nope it's just clear so that menu is now finished so I now need to launch the menu when the edit text is pressed and held which is public void on create and I need a context menu parameter so it's grayed out it means it hasn't got the parameters context menu menu and view view 
context menu info info and now it's gone black so I've got the right parameters so let's put some code in here we'll see which control is being clicked on I know there's only one but it's worth knowing how to do this so if view dot get id is equal to r dot id dot so if the edit text has been clicked we need to do something so menu inflator inflator equals get menu inflator so I've got the menu inflator now inflator dot inflate I need the menu resource which is r dot menu dot edit so our menu we had comma and we want the menu so that should create the option menu let's test this so I will get to the second screen I will click and hold and there's my clear option that appears so we need to have a tiny bit of code now in a new event handler to clear that edit text public boolean on context item selected menu item item will do if if item dot get item id is equal to r dot id dot clear context clear then we can clear the text so this dot edit text dot set text to nothing and because it returns boolean return super dot on context item selected and pass it the parameter that should be done and let's take that out and drop it outside the if statement So I'm going to open the second screen. I'm going to press and hold. Click on clear, which works now. How cool is that? And put some different text in. I'm going to hide the keyboard and go back. And there's my walkthrough finished. And we covered all the skills you need to be able to complete the fourth lab task.